hey, Sean, I finally figured out how we deal with these protesters. We take all these people, we round them up, and we listen to them. We listen to them, we ask for their ideas, and then we work together to find out where those ideas could succeed, where they could fail, what's been done in the past similar to those ideas, what we can learn from what's been tried already, and how we can have a plan to move forward together. That's how we deal with these protesters. To really understand how to deal with protesters, we have to understand why people protest. And, and protests occur when a government or an organization or a company fails at something. They fail to look after a group of people to provide something. They fail in some way. And there is no way to create a government, an organization, or a company that won't have problems. There's no way to just create a perfect organization that's going to always have everyone covered. Things are just far too complicated and far too subject to impact from environmental circumstances or, or a number of things that we can't control. And I know how hard leadership can be because I've been the assistant to the captain for a Frisbee team. And our Frisbee team is like 20 white people. And even in that group over the past five years, there have been problems. There have been disagreements. And if those kind of things exist with a recreational Frisbee team, just imagine how hard real leadership is of companies, organizations, and the government, local and national. And I understand that it's hard, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be done or you shouldn't try, and I'm not giving anybody any excuses, but... When you're the leader of one of these big companies, no one expects you to be perfect. No one expects you to create a system that is flawless. People are going to get hurt. People are going to get overlooked. Things are going to come up that you never thought would happen, things that were impossible to anticipate. But the key to being a good leader is to take the time to listen to different opinions about it, to look at data, to try different programs, to admit that you might have been wrong about what you thought before or that what you thought before was based on something that has changed and it's okay to now change in, in response to that. And you look at these things and you, you come up with solutions and you try them. You try them in small scales, you build on the ones that are successful, you discard the ones that aren't. That's what leadership looks like. That's what successful companies have done. That's how they look after their employees and, and provide a happy culture and a happy life for people. It comes from compassionate leadership. So when there's this breakdown in a government or an organization or a company to look after everyone, protests happen. Workers go on strike because they don't have any other tool to control their wages. And, and if they did, they would be using that tool. But when it's not enough, they use the only tool they have, which is to stop working, to use their time and their presence to demand to be listened to by leadership who otherwise has no incentive to listen and to make changes. And that's what's happening with these protests is things aren't changing or aren't changing fast enough. And giant groups of people are being left with a different life than their neighbors just because of, of things in the system. And that's why they protest to say, hey, let's address this issue. And if we as as leaders just dismiss that and say, well, some of your people lit a building on fire, so we're not going to listen to you. We, we've also looked at examples where, where people have done very, very peaceful protests and leadership looks at that and they say, hey, good protest. See you later. We don't talk about solutions. We don't talk about these things together. And that's the only way we're going to fix this is if we get people from all sides with the people who are in charge and say, hey, here's the problem, and here's five ideas we have to fix it. Now let's work together to go through these five and figure out what might work, what might not, what we can try, what we shouldn't try, what's been tried before that we can build on. And for example, police reform is, is a big part of these protests right now, and, and defending the police versus defunding the police is sort of the two sides right now. For us to have reform that, that's going to be helpful, if the people who are opposed to police reform are yelling, defunding the police is going to make the world a dangerous place and everything's going to go to hell, we're not going to get anywhere. And if the people who want police reform are just screaming, defund the police, defund the police, take their money, all cops are bastards, we're not going to get anywhere. So we need to come together and have a discussion and say, what are 
our common goals and what are ways that we can work there. And we need to do it without yelling. And it's as simple as saying, okay, if we want police to be different, if we want the experience of a citizen to be different, first of all, what do we want that experience to look like? Do we want people who, do we want patrol cars on every corner keeping an eye on everybody? Probably not. Do we want an absolute lack of presence from anyone who's going to be able to help with a burglary or any situation like that? No, no one wants that. So what are our goals? And then to say, what have we tried in the past that has worked? Have we tried a training program that resulted in less murders by police? If so, let's look at that training program. Let's build on it. Have we seen trainings that have happened with police that have not produced positive results and have been a waste of money that haven't really affected the departments? Let's look at these things and then choose the programs that we want to work forward with. And let's put the budget on the table and say, if we spent $200,000 on a tank for our department, maybe that $200,000 could be used to fund some new programming that deals with people who have specific mental health issues instead of sending cops who aren't properly trained. And, and if, if we can find programs that help people who are having overdoses and looking at these things and say, there are experts that deal with this. If we could put a little bit of money there instead of buying a tank, there's, there's room that we can find to work together in a budget to say, well, let's try some of this. Let's try some of that. Let's see what works. Let's see what doesn't. And let's move forward together. But let's keep the dialogue going. Let's have the discussion rather than yelling from either side. And so what I'm looking for in leadership and why I'm, I'm struggling right now is that it seems like a lot of the people in charge right now aren't listening. And they're quickly saying, well, those protests turned violent, so we're not listening to them. And, and all that does is further this division. And, and if we continue to do this and, and, and fuel this violence by ignoring either side of it, I get that people want peace in their neighborhoods. They want order. They want justice. But that doesn't come by squashing the other side with more police for presence. That comes from a conversation to say, what do we want this country to look like? What are some reasonable ways that we can get there? What can we learn from our past? And what can we try to move into the future together? Because if we don't do that, we're not going to fix anything. And that is why I want leaders, I want politicians who have the humility and the compassion to say, let's listen. I get that you're so angry that some of you are losing your minds and you're becoming violent and some of you just can't take it anymore and you spent your lives fighting for something not to see any progress. That must be infuriating. Talk to me about that. Tell me what that's like and tell me what you want. What are your ideas? And if we can find reasonable places to work together, we will and we can do this together. And people on any side of any issue can have changes that will help if we approach them thoughtfully, and that only happens when we have leadership that is willing to listen and to do the right thing. And so that, that is what is very important to me and why I'm voting for compassionate, empathetic, patient leadership in this next election and in any election that I get to vote in. Thanks for enduring another political soapbox. See you later. Bye.